Yesterday, fellow YouTuber Bricksculpt published a video titled The Hardest Lego Shape to Build, and he was talking about an obelisk, and the way he builds it is really, really cool. You've definitely got to check out the video after this. I'll leave it in the end screen for you so you don't have to search for it, but I have to give this a go. I love Lego. I have a history with maps, and I do enjoy the numbers behind Lego, and I actually left a comment on how I would build an obelisk, and he challenged me to give it a go, so that is what this video is. It's a bonus video. I'm still going to be working on the city tomorrow, so make sure you do come back for that. We are continuing our work on Coruscant, but right now I've built the obelisk from the comments. And here it is in all of its glory. Now you were probably expecting something a bit bigger than this, considering the most famous obelisk in the world is the Washington Monument. But this does hold up to the size of that monument. Well, rather the scaling of it because what the Washington Monument has and what is so special about it is it's roughly 10 times the height of its base. So for every stud wide, it goes up 10 bricks. And I wanted to implement this into the walls of the obelisk as Bricksculpt did in the original video, but Bricksculpt built up four studs on their side for the side of his obelisk. And that meant that he was going in a plate every level. Well, I wanted to get a bit more technical and we're never gonna get it absolutely flat and sloping unless Lego comes out with a specialized element. But I wanted to make it go half a plate every level. And as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five steps up. And if every level goes in half a plate, we've got a total of half one, one and a half to two and a half, which is 10 studs high, and that is taking up one studs width. So this is indeed going to be 10 times the height of its base, at least if you built it up enough and you'd have to fix the top as well, because I assume the top isn't far off that measurement to keep the whole thing accurate. And again, the Washington Monument isn't exactly 10 times the height, no one as far as I could find or Bricksculpt could find has actually measured it, which I can't blame them. It is massive, but there are a number of approximations out there and it does hold up. Now, what you can see is the sides aren't perfect. Bricksculpt had an amazing technique and managed to have each of the layers exactly squared off, whereas I've got a few gaps in the corners, but it's one of those things that when you build a model big enough, you're not gonna be paying attention to the little gaps in the different layers, specifically on the layers that aren't bricks. The bricks are fine, they are all smoothed off, and of course, when you're building in bricks, everything's going to add up. But you can see on these other layers, we have about half a plate here, we have a plate and a half here, about a plate width hidden there, and you could probably see what looks like a gap there because I have used dark bluish gray plates underneath, which I probably should have made tan to hide it a bit better. And then half a plate here, which is a little bit annoying when you're looking as close up as I was when I was building it, but it does resemble the shape still very well. Most of the side does hold up. Now I am gonna break this down into layers if you want a closer look, or if you want to try and build this yourself. If you're working, on a mock like a Star Wars mock. This does apply to Star Wars. The Sith are very well-known users of obelisks. And I'm not quite sure where that comes from in terms of the history of the props, but we see it time and time again in the old Republic video games. It's popped up in season two of the Rebels TV show. There's one at Galaxy's Edge and they're even selling Sith obelisks in the stores at Galaxy's Edge. So it's something that has a history with the Sith, and it'd be really cool to see this implemented, especially building that Sith temple we see in Rebels. And I was definitely contemplating adding this to my city, but I think it's just too big to fit in my current display. So who knows, maybe one day I can add it as some sort of Sith memorial. Now I do have to say when pulling this thing apart, which I was lucky enough to keep the cameras rolling so I can show you how easy or difficult it may have been. It did start to fall apart. There was a piece on the top which was sort of my fault, but one of the layers towards the end just absolutely crumbled and was a little pain 
to put back together. And that is because I have challenged myself by building this in a almost system build. There's a lot of snot bricks and brackets used, but Brick Sculpt built all of his on the side. And I took the extra challenge because for some reason, I really like putting myself through extra work when it comes to Lego and built these in system so that you can still add cores. Most of these can definitely be hollowed out in the middle. In fact, you could probably add for these layers specifically, a four by four with a two by two hole in. And if you wanted to get a big support, such as a metal rod going up through the middle of it, you can get that all the way into the top dome, which again has a two by two hole. So you can really support this if you're building this on a massive scale and it will hold up. You could put it, I don't really know where you'd put a massive one of these. I guess you could put it in your front garden, back garden. If you're building for Legoland, I recommend not watching this video any further. This is probably not gonna hold up to them models, but it's definitely good for if you're displaying a giant obelisk. The base is pretty simple. I have just added bricks to a plate and told it off, but the next level is where it gets interesting because here we have a bracket with a brick extending it, and this is to give it that extra little bit of width that will line up to exactly half a plate thinner than the base below. And there are a few gaps on here. We've hidden them with these plates, but you can see it's a pretty simple design. I especially like the fact that I've attached these one by three bricks to the bracket to offset them half a stud, and that just fills the gaps. There are a few other pieces you can use to fill the gaps here, such as the door rails. Again, Brick Sculpt has a really good video on the door rails. I think there's two of them at this point with a third one in the work. So definitely go over, check out his channel. We've been speaking a lot about it in the members discord. They stick together quite simply, especially because they are layer to layer. If you wanted to skip a layer, or even if you wanted to design a layer to have some windows coming out, perhaps a seeing platform at the top, or just get any other little references up the side. These are so modular. Just make sure to pack them in and perhaps secure them a bit more than I have. For this layer, what we have is a few slopes filling the gap because you can't get a plate either side. And whichever side you choose, if you did want to use a plate, you've got half a plate on the other side. Again, you can use a combination of a plate and a bracket to fill that gap, but I wanted it to look like it could be cut down the middle and it was the same both sides as the other layers sort of follow that previous pattern. So what I've done instead is use slopes which do fit snugly and it's a legal technique, but it's probably on the border of being illegal if there was any more pressure on each of the slopes. The next layer is back to brackets and you can see we're alternating between brackets, it's not bricks, and then we're back at brackets and you wouldn't guess what the next layer uses if you guess not bricks, I, I guess it was pretty obvious, but what we've done here is use these brackets and again, you've got half, well, you've got a plate by a plate space. So what's that? About 3.4 millimeters, I think, squared on the corner. You can offset these like I've done on the last bracket plate and use you could probably get away with using some form of jumper or you'd really need to use that door rail piece to cover both of the sides. But when you're building at a scale that this would be useful for, you're not gonna notice that little gap down the side with the snot bricks. You can see that there's a similar pattern every two layers. I'm just swapping them snot bricks and brackets out and then every fifth layer, we get to another brick layer and you can see if we didn't have all of these different layers in the model, it's fairly easy to pop off the brick layers. Oh, I've just said that and one of the plates has gone with it. If we didn't have these layers, that is a really big jump in comparison. So it does help to smooth out your obelisk again for an alternate design. I definitely recommend checking out Brick Sculpt's video, but I hope you enjoyed this very quick video. I am now going to go and start work on the Lego City, get that video ready for you tomorrow. But I just wanted to make this extra video because an impossible shape built with Lego, I had to give it a go. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the videos on screen. Actually, I'm only going to link that Brick Sculpt video. Go check it out. Subscribe to him if you haven't already. 
Thank you so much for watching and may the bricks be with you always.